started already? I already started. Holy cow, you mean business I'm today. Sneaky. You are really sneaky. All right. Boobage good. I do. I have to make sure that the children are not traumatized. Okay, let's roll. Okay. I have to clap this long one. <laughs> I'll do it. Good morning. It's the Drive to School podcast. I am Pastor Harrison Goodman, the content executive of Higher Things, and joining me today is my boss, the executive director, Erica Jacoby. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? How's it going out there in school land? They're not going to answer. It's not going to. It's just an awkward silence now. I can hear them. You can hear them? Okay. That's not them. That's something them. different. We should talk to <laughs> a doctor after this. Or an audiologist. This might be a bad podcast, but. It's going to be great, guys. We are learning about logical fallacies with Erica. Uh, the, the things that uh, we, we commonly misthink. It's misthink? Yeah. Because I, I, I can say think It's good, like your so brain misfiring. Say, okay. That happens yeah. to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And particularly when you want really want to prove your point or something's important to you. And it's an argument, right? And mm -hmm. we've talked about this before. Arguments are not necessarily bad. The, the reason to approach an, an argument is to try to get at the truth, right? And the truth is really important. Yeah. So, um, Fix so, my brain now. so, well, I don't, okay, that's going to take more than you a couple. You hear voices. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get me with that every time. Um, yeah, so today we are talking about the all or nothing fallacy. I know what those words mean. Can you guess what that is, kids? I know what those words mean. They're all little. <laughs> you do. That's not a tricky that's, one, right? That's good. So the all or nothing fallacy is an argument based on the premise, um, the wrong premise, um, that limits the options there are to two things only, right? So no middle ground, no gray so area. So no gray area. No that You are presented with, it has to be this or this. So like politics or anything on Twitter. Yeah, right, right. right. Okay. Like if you, you know, if you don't believe this, you're completely wrong. But right. I'll give you like, a, I always start with kind of a silly example because I, like I think it's helpful. Okay. So if, for example, when I was younger, I was invited to go to Disney um, with my really good friend's family, right? I wanted to go to Disneyland. Like, who doesn't want to go to Disneyland? Well, I don't anymore as an adult. Anyway, it's a they different got Star story. Wars now. So I'm pretty short, kids. I like Star Wars. They do have Star Wars. I'm pretty short, and when you're short and it gets really hot. You can't go on the rides, could you? I can go. <laughs> not when I was a kid. Okay. But now I can't. My problem is, is that I am so short, I'm in everyone's armpit height. And I don't like crowds for that reason. Anyway, that is not the logical fallacy I'm explaining today. Got me, you got me off track again. Hearing voices, getting me off track. Rides. I am not going to be allowed to be on this podcast anymore. I can't go on the rides. He's now. I'm, now I'm feeling really triggered, guys. Okay. Anyway, um, here's an example. I really wanted to go to Disney. This is how I presented the argument to my parents. Mom, Dad, you have to go to Disney. This is going to be the only time. Like right now, with my friend, mm -hmm. next weekend, if I don't go now, I'm never going to get to go. Ever. Because this It'll is my this is my best friend asking me and their family. Right. And that's it. So it didn't... The park closed down after she left. It was, right. And that, I'm sure that family never went again. Well, they certainly never invited me. Well, my parents were too smart to fall for the all or nothing fallacy. It happens in the church a lot too, though. Um, yeah, let's talk about that. What would be an example of that theologically speaking? So, I, I mean, honestly, one of the places we look at is, is ourselves. So, um, are you a Christian or not? And uh, this is actually something that you have to answer with an affirmative yes, because I am baptized. But when you start to look at yourself, it gets really easy to lose all the nuance and sort of say, well, if I can't stop sinning, am I really a Christian? It must be nothing. Uh, because I, I wrestle yeah. with the same sins over and over again. I fall into the same sins over and over again every week we start church i a poor miserable sinner and it's or i get one start. under control a little bit and the next one pops up right. it's like whack-a-mole have you so played that game it's if this is the case down. then and there's no room for nuance there's no room to address sort of grace or anything like that yeah. it's just you cannot be a christian um and in the same way well so i'm baptized so obviously it never matters if i go to church again ever again but or or it doesn't matter if i sin that would be another extreme, right? Right. And so we actually need to talk about this with a degree of nuance um, because, well, all or nothing is a logical fallacy. It is. If, if it's this, then, well, clearly sin doesn't matter. So just 
kill people? Shall we sin that grace may abound? By no means. It's in the book. It's Romans chapter 6. And in the same way, um, well, though our sins are like scarlet, they shall become white as snow. Again, in the book, it's Isaiah, yep. that, that God actually addresses our sins in his mercy by his death upon the cross. And when we fall into this all or nothing trap, it gets so easy to pretend that we're bouncing from real Christian to fake Christian, from sinner to saint instead of both. Yeah. Um, simply on the declaration of God and his promise. Yeah. And and it's clearly it's human nature for us to, to want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So all or nothing, I think that's another really pretty common fallacy. Um, so it's kind of a lazy one. That makes sense. What do you do then when you encounter it? Well, I mean, like I've, like I've said before, I think the first step is knowing the fallacy, right? Mm -hmm. And knowing what forms the fallacy takes. Um, and as we get into a little bit, you know, talk about different fallacies, sometimes you'll see a combo of some of them as well, right? Yeah. Um, but like that one two punch. Right. But just just think of it in terms, you can say, well, well, what you're doing right now is you're limiting me to like one extreme or the other. And that doesn't really, rarely does anything mm. work that way, right? Right. Um, and again, give them a parallel argument that has nothing to do, because sometimes when you're heated in a discussion, giving them a parallel, like my si silly Disney story. Like a ridiculous one. Like a ridiculous one. Right. The situation. We'll kind of diffuse the situation and say, that's why that, you know, that why, why that argument isn't yeah. quite working Can we for talk me. about this with yeah. a little bit of nuance? Yeah. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That's a good word. You taught him a good word. Nuance today. I did a good thing. Nice job. I am perfect. <laughs> that's, that's just a fallacy. <laughs> All or nothing. <laughs> Later, guys. <laughs> That'll work. Okay. You're the best. Thanks, boss. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about that, but...